I've had nine job interviews in my whole life. And out of those nine job interviews, eight of them were successful. What this means is that more than 90% of the time, when I get a job interview, I'm called back and offered the job. That's because I followed these tips that I'm going to be sharing in today's video. Hello there. My name is Dolakwa Adu, and I film about various global opportunities for international students. And I'm also going to be talking to you about how you can ace your next job interview. A lot of people have been struggling with, you know, getting job offers. And that's because getting a job offer takes different stages. So first of all, you submit your job application. And that means that you have to make sure that your CV and your cover letter stands out. So if you haven't watched my video where I talked about how to use ChatGPT to create an outstanding CV and cover letter that can get you your next job interview, then definitely watch it. I'm going to leave the link here. Now, today's video is going to be focusing about interview. So let's say, for example, you have been called now for a job interview. Maybe your CV, your cover letter was amazing, went through. You were able to show them that you've got the experience and the skills they are looking for. But now they want you to come prove it to them. They want to see you face to face or either virtually. So how do you make sure that this job interview you go for is successful? That's what I'm going to be talking to you about in today's video. Stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll be sharing my golden tip on actually acing that job interview. Now, the first tip I would give is to prepare. Now, for every successful interview that you're going to have, there must have been a preparation beforehand. And that's because it's going to tell, the employers are going to know whether or not you've prepared for that job interview. They can tell your preparation when they're asking your questions and from the answers that you give to them. So how do you then prepare for the interview? First of all, the organization you're applying to, you have to check if they have a website, a social media platform. You want to know more about this organization that you potentially want to start working in. That will then show them that you've done your due diligence, you've done your homework, and you're enthusiastic and happy or excited to start this new job. So most organizations that you apply to, they have their website, they have maybe their LinkedIn page or, their, or any of their social media platforms. Do your research on those kind of platforms and then you can get more ideas about what this company organization is about, what their values are, what their mission is. This is what you will then prove and show them in your job interview. They want to know whether or not you understand what their goals, their mission, their values are. And this is also what will make you stand out from other applicants that are coming for the interview as well. Next way that you want to prepare for your interview is going through your previous application. So the CLC and your cover letter, which you submitted initially, it's important to go through you know, what you've put down, what experiences did you outline in your CV, in your cover letter, what results did you put there? Because you want to ensure that when they're asking you questions about that experience or how you were able to achieve those results, you outlined in your CV or cover letter, you want to be able to defend it. So you have to also do your homework in that aspect. Next thing that can also help you in preparing for your job interview is actually ChatGPT. Yes, you heard that right. So ChatGPT can actually give you some interview questions, possible interview questions that you would be asked at the interview. And I'm going to be showing you how you can then use ChatGPT to create those interview questions and also give you answers as well so you know how to answer the questions. So let's go over now to ChatGPT. So over on ChatGPT, what I've done is that I've already written down the prompt and you can screenshot this prompt as well or just write it down somewhere so that you can also practice and play your way with it as well. This is the question. So I'm going to be using the same job description and the same job advert that I used in my previous video on how to use ChatGPT to create a CV and cover letter. So that is the job role of a public health strategist officer. So now I've attached the job role here on ChatGPT and then explained how you can do that as well already in my previous video. So the prompt says, you are a recruiter interviewing applicants for the role of a public health strategist. Ask interview questions using information provided in the job description attached. So once you send that, ChatGPT will then start to create interview questions that you can then use to prepare for your next interview. 
So these are some of the questions that it's just kind of generating. Now, of course, not all the questions, there's no guarantee that all the questions would be asked. But most of the time, maybe like one, two, three questions might actually come out from here because you never know. Maybe recruiters and employers as well are using ChatGPT to generate their question. Who knows? But this can really help you to have an idea. So even if none of, none of the questions come out, at least it's a very useful practice tool. So you can then practice answers or practice answering the questions to build your confidence and things like that. So it doesn't really mean or it doesn't necessarily mean that the same exact questions have to come out, but it's very useful to just have an idea of how the questions can be asked based on this particular job you're applying to so that you can then prepare ahead for the interview. So over here, ChatGPT has created different form of questions and has also groups them into different things like general knowledge and experience and it has taken this information from the job description i attached so you have to attach the job description so it has an idea of what the role is what's your kind of like what you will be doing what the person's specification is and it will use that to then generate the questions so now we have a list of different questions about 10 questions here or more if you wanted to generate more questions for you it can but now you've seen the question you've gone through the question but let's say for example you have no idea how to answer the question so this is how you can then answer the questions so you're going to use on the same um chat gpt app you're then you're then going to say please provide detailed answers to the questions above using the star method okay using the star method and the information from my cover letter attached So I'm going to explain this prompt. So basically, ChatGPT has generated the questions for you. Now you want ChatGPT to also provide detailed answers. Now when you are answering interview questions, now coming from someone who has kind of, or who has an idea of what the employers are looking for in your answers, they want you to be as detailed as possible. Now people that go for interviews and they give one line answer, no, please don't do that in your next interview. In your next job interview, you want to make sure that you give very, very detailed answers to each question that is asked. It's better to talk too much than not to talk a lot. So that's one of the things I always make sure of, that in my job interviews, I make sure I give very detailed answers. Now, how can you then give detailed answers by using the STAR approach? Now, I've talked about the STAR approach several times on my channel, and it's the situation, task, action result and then you can also add another r called reflection so what this basically means is that let's say for example you are asked a question describe a time where you had to work on a difficult project or on a difficult task so you first of all start with the situation what was the situation of that task you were asked to do maybe for example in my previous role as a public health officer i was given a task to look at um, different areas where there are so many underrepresented groups and how to provide clean water in those areas. That's the situation. Now, what was your task? Now, your task, you've already kind of talked about your task in your situation, but then you can now make it more detailed. For example, my task or my assignment was to create a very detailed project plan on how we can provide clean water in areas with a lot of socially disadvantaged, maybe young people, for example. That was your task. So you, you talked about your task a bit in the situation, but now you're going into more details in the task section. Now you're going to action. So what did you do? So what I did was that together with my team or I led a team, usually when they see that you're the one taking initiative, it's always good to talk about you leading rather than you saying you supporting. So for example, you say I led a team of five people rather than saying I supported a team of five people. That leading a team makes them feel like yes or makes the recruiters feel like yes, you're taking initiative. So your action is I led a team of five people to build a particular maybe water filter or something or to design a water filter machine that will filter water and make it clean and then distribute it across that area so that the young people from that area will have access to clean water so that's your action you can then you can put more information in your action as well depending on what you've done 
then you go into your results. So what was the result of you doing that? So let's say, for example, using the same example, as a result of providing access to clean water for a lot of socially disadvantaged young people in social areas, there was then a 90% reduction of cholera outbreak in that area. So you are giving results of what you've done. Or let's say, for example, if, it's, if you say something like a 90% reduction of cholera outbreak in a span of two years, then you can then add your reflection. So let's say, um, by doing this, I've then discovered the importance of teamwork in achieving a goal or a mission. Or you, you can do a reflection of you've seen how organization, how you were able to impute your organizational skills and how that was able to help you to build this project plan and things like that. So you can see that by using that, I've already I've spoken a lot already at length. I've shown the employers that, yes, I have an idea of this question. I have experience and I'm able to defend that experience in a detailed way. And I've also sold myself as well because I've told them the results of my actions. So that has kind of made them impressed also. So that's why it's important to use the STAR method to answer every question that you're asked during your interview. Now, I've asked ChatGPT to do this as well for the same question that it has asked here. But now I'm attaching a CV you ready used to apply for the job previously. So that means that your experiences are listed there. So you want ChatGPT to use your experiences to then create the answers. It's used the job description to create the questions. Now it's going to use your experience and your cover letter or your CV to create the answers. So basically, ChatGPT now is giving me the detailed answers to each of the questions. Now, the questions are quite a lot, so it's going to try to keep doing that. But basically, as you can see here, it has given a detailed answer based on the situation, task, action, and result, which I just explained. I'm just going to use as an example. This is a question that ChatGPT generated. It said, can you describe your understanding of the wider public health agenda and how you have applied this knowledge in previous roles to improve population health? How have you worked with diverse communities or in area of deprivation? Now, just about my situation here. You can read the situation. You can read the task, the action, and the results. So I'll just read only the results. It says, my findings were instrumental in recommending strategies that targeted the root causes of health inequities, such as improving access to maternal health care. This experience, deepened, this experience deepened my understanding of the wider public health agenda and its application in addressing health disparities. So if, for example, you have some quantifiable metrics that you can put in there, you can also put that in there. Or you can also ask ChatGPT in your prompt, saying, for example, um, please provide detailed answers to the questions above using the STAR method and also provide quantifiable metrics so ChatGPT will provide quantifiable metrics in the results for you using the same information from your cv so that's basically how you can use ChatGPT to create questions and answers so you can go through the answers as well practice with the answers you can also get a friend or someone to ask you so that they can see how you're also kind of responding to the answers as well now you want to try to make sure that you don't just cram the answers it's your experience right this is just to kind of guide you to see how you can answer the questions it's your own experience it's something that you did so you can explain it better but in a more structured way and this is what ChatGPT helps you with now to conclude i'll just be giving some other extra tips as well to ace that next job interview the first one is be very confident confidence is very important when you are in an interview you don't want to be in an interview and you're looking shy or for example you're not answering questions you know loudly you want to show them that yes i'm prepared for you. and you know being prepared boosts your confidence for an interview so when you've prepared very well for an interview it kind of boosts your confidence as well so that's one of the things i would definitely recommend is to try and work on your confidence whenever i go for an interview i ensure that i'm very confident and another way that i can boost your confidence is how you dress you want to dress smart when you dress smart for an interview it also kind of boosts your confidence let's now say is please don't be humble like when you go for an interview, tell them all the experiences and the skills that you have. It's not a time for you to be trying to be humble or trying not to blow your trumpet. Please, in that interview, blow your trumpet. You deserve it. You are the, you worked for those experiences that you're about to talk about. So 
make sure that you blow your trumpet. Like I said, you want to stand out from other applicants as well. Everyone is going to come with their A game. Everyone is going to come full of energy, full of confidence. Everyone that's applying for the job or coming for that interview, they also want the job as much as you want it as well. So why do you want to then humble yourself and say, I'm not going to blow my trumpet? No, please don't do that. Sell yourself, sell your skills. Let them know how amazing that you are. This is one of the things that really helps you as well in your interview. Next thing I will say is smile now don't go into the interview you know squeezing your face and you're not smiling no please when you're going to an interview smile at them give them a pleasant smile that also makes them feel like okay this person is a kind of welcoming person this person is someone that i can really work with and that first impression really matters a lot don't go in squeezing your face don't go in looking sad but smile and show your enthusiasm for the job when they're asking you questions let them see how excited you are to actually start working in that organization that is one thing i've heard of a story of someone who how amazing this person was he ticked all the boxes but then when he got a response why he wasn't offered the job after the interview they had responded to him saying that because he didn't show enough enthusiasm for the job but that's to tell you that it's very very important show that enthusiasm let them know that you're excited to start this new role i think that you need to also do during your interview that will make you stand out like i mentioned earlier on is showing that you understand the values of the organization one very very important thing that you can do as well is to think about a problem that the organization is facing and how do you discover that problem is when you have done your research from the beginning so let's say you have done your research you have discovered that they have this particular gap there's this gap in the organization and it's something that you feel like you can you know kind of bring in your input or bring in value to you want to highlight that during your job interview talk about what problem you've noticed that they are facing and how you coming into the role you'll be able to support them and help them solve that problem that automatically makes you stand out because they're looking for someone that will come and help them solve their problem that's why they're hiring you so when you're able to prove that and show that to them that yes i know that there's a problem that you're facing i know that this is the gaps that you have and using my experiences and my skills this is how i'll be able to fill that gap or this is how i'll be able to support and help to ensure that, that problem doesn't exist this when i start my role trust me you've gotten that job okay so you need to follow all of these tips like i said it's more about practice even when you don't get um, a job offer after an interview it has given you some necessary experience and i always kind of advise that try to get a feedback after an interview let's say you did an interview you didn't get the job get or ask for a feedback to see for example what maybe you didn't do or what you didn't say so sometimes those feedback really helps in your next job interview so see it as a form of experience see it as something you're using to build your skills to build that experience that you need for your next job interview so i hope all of these tips have been helpful if they have please kindly like share and please subscribe to my channel if you have not share it to your friends and you know people around you that you know that are currently maybe preparing for job interviews or are also on job hunts at the moment this would be very very useful information for them so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next video goodbye